my check one two one two. My sweet waifu. Is that you? My check, my check, waifu, waifu. Tell, is that you? I want to take you to the mile high club. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. What's up, bro? Hey, how you feeling, brother? Well, man, I'm feeling well. Welcome to episode 31 of My Check, Waifu, Waifu. As always, I'm Polo, joined by my brother, King Teliano. Um, got a lot of great anime to talk about, but. As always, I like to start off by saying this podcast is brought to you by Lou Complex. They out in uh, out in the anime con in L.A. doing it up. So I don't know if it's over or if we're still going or not. One of these days we're going to be out there with them. One of these days. Yeah, one of these days for sure. Um, so shout out to him. Uh, go to LouComplex.com. Use the offer code Waifu to save on your entire cart. And it's also brought to you by www.patreon.com slash bike check Waifu Waifu. Our Patreon producers, Monique Williams, Connor, and Chris Goodywin. I'm going to throw the echo on Chris Goodywin one time on these episodes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so this episode, we got a lot to talk about. We got a couple of news topics, a couple of shows that we watched that uh, came from the winter 2020 slate. And also, Fire Force is finally going to be reviewed using our official Mike Check Waifu Waifu scale. So I'm excited about that. Let's get this thing cracking, Till. So, um, I don't know, bro. What you want to talk about first? Because you know, I got a list. Yeah, you do. Uh, so, <laughs> I think I think I want to start off with uh, some of the uh, twenty twenty slate. Right? We Let's both. I watched the first two episodes of Darwin's Game. Um, I like it a lot, man. So, <laughs> I like it a lot. You like you like Darwin's game a lot. I, my question, I like it so much. My question is, after watching that first episode, because I've only seen the first episode so okay. far. You know how we're a fan of that forty-five minute intro. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. yeah. What do you think? It was it was great. I thought it was great. The forty-five minute episode was great because they was able they were able to explain enough for me to understand exactly what's going on. Because if they would have done a 25 minute joint, it wouldn't have been enough. It wouldn't have been enough. It wouldn't have been enough straight up. They explained just enough to keep the intrigue going to the uh, to follow through through the next episode. And obviously in, in episodes beyond. Like I know nothing about the game, but we're learning with the main character at the exact same time. And that's so intriguing to me. So intriguing to me. It got, it captivated me. It captivated me for sure. Uh, I personally think this is one of the cleanest uh, intros for anime for a while. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying it's the best, but no. I'm saying it's the cleanest. Like, okay, we're on the same page. Like, like they came in and it seemed pretty chill. Like it did, actually it didn't seem chill at first no. at all. It came in with that intro, like "Hey yo, uh, you about to fight?" And exactly. Into this fight. He's trying to figure out who who he can call to help him. And he's talking about points and we like, what does the points matter? He's like, I gotta call a friend. No, that's that's five hundred thousand points. I'm like, yeah. what the f- <laughs> you gotta call a friend costs points. I'm like, okay, is this an Izakai? And he turns around and says, It's just a game anyway. And he starts popping off this fancy little light sword or something like that. I'm yeah. just okay, this is an Izakai, maybe he's not really gonna die. Nope. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Oh, oh panda bear dude was like, we not having that, bro. <laughs> Bruh, dude, it's uh, slight spoilers for episode one of Darwin's Game. My um, apologies. That's the intro. You'll see. No, yeah, that. no, it's not not you saying. I'm saying we're probably going to go into slight spoilers. <laughs> but the this is probably one of the better battle royales. Um, Juni Tyson had a slightly better start only because of, I guess, the way it played out. But I, this, I, I think I'm more intrigued in this one than I was in Juni Tyson. Yeah, the the only thing that would have made this feel, because uh, like Juni Tyson gave me stress, mm-hmm. but I enjoyed it, right? Mm-hmm. And I think if they had take that Juni Tyson approach where it was like we don't know if the main character is gonna survive or yeah. not, that would give me the stress that would make this show like put it over the edge. Like this right. is definitely a, a, a ten out of ten beginning, right? But 
I also I'm not sure yet. Like I, I'm not sure if I want the main character to be disposable. It gave me stress. <laughs> I don't know about you. <laughs> I was stressed the fuck out when him and his friend was introduced into the game. Well, him, but his yeah. friend was already in it. But he was introduced to the game and he was trying to help his friend out. When he, especially like when he run to the cop. Dude, I'm like, oh shit. Oh, okay. Oh, oh now, yeah, right? that's what I um, thought. Nope. Cops don't cops don't matter. In nope. This. He's just gone. Just literally gone. And that shit. It's it's super intriguing. Darwin's game got a lot of hype because apparently the manga is super popular. So I, I sent out a, t- a tweet on our um official Mike Check Waifu Waifu Twitter at Mike Check Waifu. A lot of people, uh, I put out the recommendation that Darwin's game watch it. It's a great start so far, and a lot of people said, "What? This got a this got a show? This got a show?" Yeah, they were like shocked to see it see it having having a show. So, um, you know, this is right now one of the top ten most popular anime of twenty twenty. Is it really? Yeah, it's ranked number seven. Wow, that's incredible. Uh, deservingly so so far, man. I'm, the first two episodes got me. Uh, yeah, that first episode got me. I I definitely almost watched it, but I had other other yeah, stuff to watch. Yeah. So I, I, You're but I'm loving curve. I'm loving the characters too though. Like yeah. like the Shuka chick. Mm-hmm. I like her. Waifu definitely waifu. waifu material. Yeah, yeah. I love that he woke up to her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was great. <laughs> Oh, it was man. awesome, man. And I'm, I'm interested, like you probably already know, but I'm interested to learn the mechanics of the game, right? Yeah, they they slightly go into it as the episode uh, two progresses too, which is it's crazy. So there's still more to learn, obviously, even I, where you are. Absolutely, I, I, yeah, I still don't. I, I, I want to learn more as it progresses. We we learn at the same exact time that the main character learned, and that you cannot stress enough. Like that be like some of the best storytelling ever. Like when you learning as the main character is learning and not just, you know, a little bit about the world and, and, and your overpowered main character just get thrown into it. But in this case, he's not really overpowered or is he, we don't know yet. So we don't know yet. I mean, that power, that power almost remind me of the fate series. Yeah. Yeah. By your boy too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But I just wanted to say though, like, I love it. Yeah, it's I cool. want to know if that ability only works for items he already has in his possession, or right. can he just under like, can he look at somebody like, hey, like the girl with the chains, right? She got the chains. Can mm-hmm. he just like, nah, give me them chains and just like, and then bring them? That's a good question. I think they go into it a little bit in the episode two, but they don't go all the way into it. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so so far this is a uh, this is how my list, but I only watched a couple, and that's uh, between that and Invaded. Yeah, I was gonna say from the like five specifically twenty twenty anime I've watched so far, it's probably number two right now on my list. Okay, let's go into your number one on your list then. So I, I talked about this a little bit with you, yeah. Um, but my number one on my list right now for uh, twenty twenty, I don't think it had a good of, as good of a first episode mm-hmm. as Darwin's Game, but it's based on potential right now. Okay, this first episode to me. It created so many different like perspectives to me, right? Hmm. It's, it's called In slash Spectre, so Inspector, and it's essentially <laughs> about a young girl who is now seventeen years old. And uh, I mean, I don't really want to spoil it, but she is considered a god to like yokai and spirits yokai being like undead spirits mm-hmm. or dead spirits and then like other little creatures in japanese culture mm-hmm. um and to, in order to become that she was like kidnapped at the age of 11 and uh the spirits took her eye and took one of her legs and this is oh, and this is supposed to make her resemble um one of their gods one of their gods is missing an eye and a leg mm-hmm. and she goes around solving and fixing the problems for like spirits and whatnot uh but one of the things that we see is that she is in like love with this guy. Okay. Like this, this older Romance. guy. I'm like, who when, when she first meets him has a girlfriend mm-hmm. and uh, it's actually like uh, ridiculous. Right. So the girlfriend disappears or he, the girlfriend breaks up with the guy because they see a Kappa, which is this sea creature um, or water creature that looks like a turtle, but has a human body with like a, 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 around tuft of hair around his head, right? Mm-hmm. 
and she sees this creature and she freaks out and jumps onto the guy and it's like holding him crying and super scared and the creature actually looks at him and runs away wow that's so, him so she <laughs> she broke up with him because she had never seen a creature so so like frightening right. and it wasn't it wasn't because of just kappa being scared because she was scared of that at first but when she saw how scared it was of him yeah it made her feel uneasy so she broke up with him later the girl obviously being a spirit investigator and whatnot loves the the aura and power he has oh uh, there, there's there's more information to it but you know how i said uh uh Darn's game is rated number seven most popular right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is rated number 16, but it's actually in terms of actual ratings so mm-hmm. far for 2020, it's ranked number eight in comparison to Darn's game being ranked number 12. Ooh, okay. Now, I still, I'm still gonna say Darn's game had a better opening, but I just think there's so much potential for this to be good. Okay. I just hope they don't drop the ball. So, looking at the uh, like the cover art of it, it looks beautiful. How is the art? The animation, in my opinion, is definitely top tier. Like, yeah. I don't think I don't think it's gonna necessarily be like uh, this episode of uh, My Hero or as good as some of the Fate series. But they definitely had like a lot of the high quality like particle effects and stuff like that. But it wasn't. It didn't seem like it was. It seemed like it was a well animated episode, but it didn't seem like if if they was gonna put their budget in this episode, it wasn't this episode they put all their budget into. I got you. This was that episode that captivated you to just get you in, like, oh, that's interesting. Not the episode that captivated you. It's like, oh yeah, you stuck here. You stay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Speaking of that, man, I I started a little bit of a episode nine of a uh, Babylonian. It's man, that show is good. The repercussions of what happened in episode eight, I, I love it. I can't I can't wait to finish it. Come out. Talking about fate, yeah, fate, yeah. So, uh, what what episode was that? If you don't mind, just come, well, I I barely started it. I got about seven minutes into it, but it's the it's like the repercussions and uh uh our boy uh, Gilgamesh is talking about who the who the villain is. He's telling the people the vi- actual mm-hmm. villain is is uh what's her name and Tiamat, yeah Tiamat, and they're about to go ahead and uh, beef up. So, <laughs> I'm looking forward to finishing that um, episode. I, to be honest, I've been, uh, I don't know, slightly, slightly on the Monster Hunter kick. I know it's a game and we, we talk about games and stuff on the after story, but I've been playing a new computer. Yeah. yeah, I've been playing (laughs) a lot of games that I just couldn't play on my old computer. So I've been playing a bunch of Monster Hunter all day with Malik. So shout out to Malik for doing that and haven't been able to watch as much anime as I would like, but yeah, I'm, uh, I, I'm enjoying it. Um, dude, I I really want to see this inspector though. It's, it's In only a twenty four it's a twenty four minute episode. You think it would have um, benefited from the forty five minute joint? Kind of. Only because they could have given us more detail. But yeah. I actually think that if they had given us another forty five minutes or another another twenty minutes, it almost would have been it probably would have felt like too much. Oh, oh. You, you know how like sometimes less is more. This isn't I don't think this yeah. is one of those series that's going to do less. Or less is more. I think this is enough to like say, oh, yeah, you're coming back next episode, but not like you stuck. You know, like what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I think that actually this is the kind of series that should end on a 45 minute episode rather than begin on a 45. minute. I episode. see. I see. I think that's what. OK, I'm going to just say this. I think that's what made my shield hero. Uh. Uh, Astro Lost in Space and Darwin's game so great because they had their starts were so strong. Dynamic. Yeah, and so dynamic. Like it's they they benefited from that 45 minutes because they needed that time to establish this is what's going on and this is what you got to look forward to from here on out. Because in my shield hero, everything popped off in that 45 minutes. You know what I'm saying? And then it mm-hmm. and then uh, like like Philip said, up to episode five, it was just it was just hitting every single beat and it was hurting us. It was giving <laughs> us every emotion before it started to turn into just a regular isekai. But it's, man, those 45 minute starts are beneficial. That's why I need to hurry up and find time to put aside to watch Psycho Pass 3 
because all of those episodes are like 45 minutes. So, it actually looks amazing too. Yeah. So we, we gotta, we gotta step into that. That may, I mean, it's, I think it's done now, right? I think it, it's only it eight only, episodes. Only, yeah. I've already finished like the first two. Okay. Episodes. So maybe we'll do a, an official review for that too. Cause I mean, it's, we, we, we did deserve it. Cause psychopaths is, is one of the greats, man. Yeah. I was going to say, um, at least the first two seasons. Yeah. Definitely. Do you think? Do you, do, can we agree on that? <laughs> yeah, I w- I was actually gonna say that I actually think ID Invaded gave me psychopath vibes. It did, it did. ID ID Invaded gave me psychopath vibes from the moment it started, and then like I kind of wasn't. It gave us two episodes, so it didn't do the forty five minutes when it first dropped. It gave the first two episodes of the season uh, the same day. I was in it from minute five on like it was crazy dude i'm like whoa what the fuck is going on here i liked it and then as it continued i'm I'm starting to like understand it a little bit more and i don't know if i care as much you know what i'm saying like the Uh, yeah i'm starting to not care as much Uh, and only because i don't know it's like it's like uh Problem solver slash Isekai, right? Mystery slash Isekai. Kind of, yeah. Um, definitely more uh, mystery and 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 uh, um, I would say, what what's the word I'm looking for? Supernatural. Yeah, I I enjoyed it. Like I said, I only watched the first episode so far out of the three that that are currently out. Yeah, and I don't know. I enjoyed the first episode. The second episode might. Put me on the page you're on. Yeah, you, uh, because it may. If, or it could if be it better slows in episode down three. And, and the mystery is like, because I'm I'm a fan of the mystery in general, right? But if if the mystery is weak, right. I don't know what to say. Like it's episode two starts to feel a little bit predictable. I guess you you could say with like our main character essentially. Mm. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I guess in the beginning we we see our main character, yep. but we don't really get like that full indulgence of the main character. Like the main character is not the main focus all the time. Exactly. It's more or less what was going around and going on around the main character. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I like, I really thought that was a cool concept in general, you know, mm-hmm. like we have a main character, but he's doing something isolated and separated from the group. Exactly. That, that means something to the whole. Yeah. And I wish, I, I, I mean, I guess I, I haven't seen the second episode, so I don't know, but I, they, I hope that they continue that kind of pattern. They do. They explain it kind of slightly what's what's going on there. Um, um, I think I get it so far. Like I said, I think it's predictable, but I got to watch episode three to confirm my suspicion because it feels like I feel like I know exactly what's going to happen in episode three. So I got to watch it to understand right. it. But it's definitely some mystery in there for sure. Like some big mystery. Um, that's dis- that's disappointing. No, it's, don't, don't be disappointed yet because I'm not disappointed yet. I just I don't I just don't care as much as I do like in Darwin's game or you know what I'm saying or yeah. really anything else um, <laughs> um so have, have you watched um Infinite Dendogram Dendrogram I did not so that's another Izakai for the year 2020 <laughs> um, now I just want to say really quick I'm not going to go too hard on it yet um Infinite Dendrogram to me has a very entertaining start. Wait, wait, time out, time out. Infinite Digio, did is this the people with the numbers on them? No. Okay, I did that watch that. Plunderer. I did watch Plunderer. Okay, I want to watch Plunderer too. I just haven't started it yet. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do want to watch Plunderer, so please don't don't spoil that no, too much. No, not yet. I'm not. But Infinite Dendrogram is like Sword Art, but I think from the jump, it has some cool, like Sword Art esque things going on. But it also has like that whole not overpowered but overpowered Izakai moments. Oh, already? Yeah. It's not like so it's not like how Demon Lord Retry is in any way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. You know? Basically how it works is everyone in this in this world or in this in this reality can put on this VR headset and they can go into the infinite dendrogram. And essentially the game is uh hyper realistic you can live there for the rest of your life Mm -hmm. you can go there for five minutes if you want to but basically everyone gets what's called an embryo Mm -hmm. and the embryo evolves based on how you do things and Mm. it's basically infinite amount of like possibilities uh 
now I'm there's intrigued. like yeah there's like five different types of embryo and then there's a unique embryo and obviously our main character happens to unlock what may seem to be the unique embryo okay and uh it's actually kind of powerful but it's so the embryo itself is powerful but he isn't you know like he's level oh, zero right now yeah like so, my, uh overpowered mother or whatever that one was called he, yeah, but it actually it seems really good. The animation is not bad mm. at all. Um, how they throw him into the game is actually kind of cool. And then the first moment that he meets an NPC. So the NPCs apparently in this game are they have human intelligence. Oh, and if they and if the NPC dies, they fuck die like. permanent. They they die permanently. Yeah, like <laughs> fuck like. So. Uh, I thought that was really cool too because it's like even though there it's a video game, yeah. it feels as if like you know these are real people right. and losing them is actually of some kind of value to the entirety of the game. Right? I thought it was epic, dope. I'm looking forward to it. I because a lot of these are are coming like dubbed shortly after, and some of them I'm looking at. I'm like maybe I just want to wait for the dub so I could do other stuff and watch it. You know what I'm saying? That that's kind of what I was on. But something that, that came out subs and dubbed at the same time, which is surprising to me once you, you watch it, is Plunderer. And I'm like, why is this coming out simultaneously? But stuff like that, like what you just described or or Darwin's game isn't coming out simultaneously because um, this one's just like it's super Kanye shrug. It's like this. this it's like the girl, the, the main character. Uh, gets a task from her mother and she starts the task and you meet uh, some of the other characters and the other characters are uh, very unique and that's all I'm going to say because I know you're going to watch it soon uh, I mean I no, no give me more information bro I'm confused why is this super Kanye shrug um, why are you no, it's not an isekai it's just a it's just a world okay okay uh, the girl gets a task from her mother to deliver this orb thing to a specific hero that's in this world. Okay. She has to deliver this orb to the specific hero in this world. She walks literally a, a whole lot of miles. Okay. And she gets to this town and everybody talks about how ridiculous it is that she walked. But in this in this town, they kind of establish how the world works. And the world works by uh, stating that everybody in the world has a specific number on their on a piece of their body, on, on, on a part of their body. This number is specifically unique to that person. So, for example, our main character, she has uh, the only way her number can go up on her person is if she walks at least 100 kilometers. So every 100 kilometers she walks, she gains her number goes up. OK. Uh, somebody else that she meets, one of the other, uh, I guess, main characters. Uh, every time somebody say her food is good, her number goes up. So essentially, you, you want to keep your number rising. OK, if your number goes down to zero, then you get dragged into something called the uh, abyss, which means you're ba you basically go to hell. You die, essentially. Or I guess they don't say you die, but you go to the abyss. Um, so she gets to this town. She's looking for this particular hero guy. And uh, she finds this military dude. This guy is a part of a military who has the unique symbol that um, the guy she's looking for has as well. And it's essentially a star next to their 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 number. So she goes to meet him, finds out. Yeah, you, you find out some stuff. It, it gets rough. And uh, and he basically does this is not a major spoiler but this is, is slightly a spoiler he does something that essentially takes her number down all the way to one another rule in his world is that whatever whenever somebody with a higher number than you tell you to do something you have to obey it or your number goes down um so she, with her number being dropped down to one um and his number being higher than hers now he basically takes her orb that she was carrying to give to the hero and um, and it kind of goes from there. And I'm not going to say anything else because it'll be a major spoiler. But it's 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 an interesting premise. But the execution isn't isn't there. Oh, man. And it's That's because and it's because the. The characters, I don't like. I don't like the chick. Um, 
and I kind of don't like some of the other main characters. Again, I'm not going to spoil it, but he's it's so annoying. Like it's just annoying. And hopefully it gets better in episode two, but it's not there now. It's not there now at all. Um, I am going to still watch it, though. It's not Demon Slayer. Oh, not Demon Slayer. It's not. Uh, what's that fucking show that you just brought up? Demon Lord retried bad, though. OK, but it's, it's I mean, nothing's that bad. No, nah, nothing. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. Except, Good point. except for Black Clover's animation. <laughs> there it is. There's a shot. <laughs> Every episode. Every episode. Oh, man. That show's rough. Anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, with that, we got a little piece of news. That not too happy news, unfortunately, um, to share with you, our anime listeners. Um, Atel, if you want to do the unfortunate honors. All right. So... Um on January 9th, uh, Yuji Yamaguchi uh, passed away. Uh, many of us, just off his name, probably won't really understand or know who that, that person is, but he is the director of some of our favorite anime and one of my personal favorites, uh, Fate Stay Night, and he also came back and redirected Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, which many people love. Um, and he also directed like Cowboy Bebop, Mm. Uh, GGG no Kotaro and Outlaw Star Huge and, anime um, Yeah He was um, a director And basically a storyboarder For many of these series So when you like Arguably Fate Stay Night Fate, uh, Fate Stay Unlimited Blade Works And Cowboy Bebop have some great stories That people loved yeah. across oh, yeah. Across the globe um, Sadly he passed um, Causes it, or it doesn't say. I, I believe it's just natural old age. Yeah. yeah. How old That's was just, he? Um. Oh my goodness! It doesn't even tell me. We can find out, but yeah, it's just sad to sad to hear that he yeah that he passed to, and, and that you know all to, these series he left behind. Right to lose somebody so iconic. I mean, again, it, it may not mean much to us as Americans because we don't really pay attention to who's directing what and which I do I do think what's been awesome about doing this podcast and just talking to people in general and listening to other podcasts like we're uh worst generation podcast or, or Blanime people are starting to get into who directs what or what studio does what because I mean you start to notice the difference in studios i.e example uh, between you foldable and and the studio that does Black Clover and Boruto. Um, <laughs> it's studio like Perry huge, and Studio Bones. Yeah, exactly. It's like that's it's super important um, to the culture to know who these people are and, and, and the importance that it is. And that's kind of something that we want to spread by bringing uh, the news um, a part, like uh, being a being a part of this podcast, because I think that's imp- kind of important for us to sh- like start sharing this stuff. Yeah. Oof. It's rough though. Yeah. Um Were you able to find his uh his age of passing? I'm I'm a little I'm gonna be a little sorry because actually now that I'm looking at it, it I believe they said he was twenty seven. What? Wait, how did no, there's he can't be. He can't be a director of Cowboy Bebop if He's yeah. 27. <laughs> yeah, it said age of 27. Maybe he started at the age of 27. Oh, okay. Okay. Which would still be sad because that means he's maybe like in his 40s when he passed. Yeah. It's way too young. Gone too early. I'll up, we'll update you um, when we find out his exact age. Yeah, we'll we'll write it on Twitter. Uh, or after the break, possibly. Yeah, yeah. probably after the break. Anyway, um, speaking of that, let's... uh. Let's take a quick break and we're going to come back with our Fire Force review. Um, We're going to do the Fire Force review with our official review scale. Um, I can't wait to do it. And then after that Fire Force review, we're going to do our My Hero talk, which is going to be a decently sized conversation. So we're going to put the break a little bit early in this episode, Um, probably in every episode from here on out. We're going to start doing our breaks a little bit more early, but uh, stick around. We got some great stuff for y'all. 
and some dope music. So be on the lookout for that.
and welcome back to Mike Check Waifu Waifu episode 31. Please, if you have the, the chance, take out, check, take out, <laughs> check out teespring.com slash stores slash Mike Check Waifu Waifu and get stuff like this dad hat that you see on my head. Um, obviously stating Mike Check Waifu Waifu and Kanji, Mike in English. Uh, and we got a uh, new work coming soon. Ooh, I see you. Artwork coming soon. Check out the video version of this podcast to see that little flash of more artwork. Um, so yeah, this is when we get into our Fire Force official review. Man, I miss Fire Force. I'm gonna just go ahead and say that. I miss it quite a bit. You know what I don't miss about Fire Force? What is people underrating it? Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> People did not like Fire Force as much as we did. I mean, if you look at the ratings, it's ratings. It's, it's really not high at all. Oh, like on uh, Annie List and stuff like that, too? Yeah, in general. It just isn't rated as high as I think it should be. It should be, man. It should be. First off, Fire Force's um, storytelling, I think, is huge. Okay. It's big. It's different. It's unique, and that's what was so impressive to me. It was much better um, than Soul Eater. Oh yeah, yeah, because it the same people who made Soul Eater made Fire Force. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Even though Soul Eater had a great story in the beginning, it was really just the ending. They just wrapped that stuff up all wrong. Yeah, but it so far what I would say is personally this has better storytelling than Soul Eater. Yeah, yeah. I haven't seen so either, so I can't make that judgment call, but I, I believe you. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, I believe you wholeheartedly. So, yeah. So, um, Fire Force, man. Um, shit. It was great. It was. Well, what was what was your favorite part of it? What, what just what just stood out the most to you? Like what? Give me an episode. A moment. That, oh, shit, dude. Um, it'll probably have to be when uh, Shinra saved Maki. After the first, after they figured out uh, the, the first company do was creating those bugs, so that whole thing when he came down from the sky with that leg kick, do 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 do, bow, and and and, and chop bull head, that was crazy. It was super <laughs> intense for me too to see Maki fall for this trap that we all knew what was going on. She clearly didn't. To see well, she didn't want to believe it. Yeah, she didn't want to believe it because that was her crush. That was the people she looked up to. Um. And she, I mean, she just did whatever her superior said, which was, which was rough to deal with because that emotion from her in that scene, when like she saw Shinra come down to save her, and like, that's when the storytelling ramps up even more so because that's when the evangelist becomes even more of a big mystery because you meet the two, uh, the sniper ev- evangelist and the uh, the uh, the big dude uh, on the outside of that uh, church that they were in. Um, that was it was intense, man. It was intense. You you kind of get like a feel for the wor- world in that episode, and that's that's the episode that that man that had me like, oh, this is the Illuminati, <laughs> right? <laughs> and they just um, feel like the world needs to burn to make it better. It's crazy. I would love to see. I can't wait to get more details on the why they they feel that way. Yeah. Um, I would have to say my favorite part would have to be the progression. From the first time our boy Shinra fought Leonard Burns or Captain Burns Ooh. to the second time he fought him. Oh, that's clean. That's a good one. Because, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Dude, his growth, Shinra's growth was actually dope, man. Because he didn't. And, and what I loved about it was that when he fought um, Captain Burns the second time, he didn't. He couldn't use the speed that he had when his brother was there, right? Mm-mm. So all he really was able to do was just go off what he had learned and actually leveled up and progressed with. You know how we kept talking about how that character development, that progression that he actually worked for. Yes. Pays off. We actually got to see it pay off. Yes. That felt good. If you notice every fight, Shinra learned a little bit more about how he can how he can better his his fighting technique. Right. Like. Almost every fight, rather if it was some some something he learned from Benny Maru or or just the way he executed his his um I guess 
his initial takeoff when he initiates a fight. It it, it just became something so strong. Um, even I was gonna say, even when he uh, first fought Habana, and yep. oh, he had to figure out how wonderful. breathing breathing could have changed how he was fighting her. You yep. know, yep. And it 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 took him it took him a while to understand it in fights, but when he understood it, it became something great. Like again, sorry y'all, sorry y'all. Here comes some more Black Clover hate. The difference between Black Clover, somebody getting a power in Black Clover, and then somebody getting a power in Fire Force or learning something about their power and fire force is that they're not the master of it. The moment they understand something, they have to gradually work their way there. Like the fight between him and show, like he learned how to go fast. Yeah. From Biddy Maru, but he didn't learn how to control it until he fought with show. And as he was fighting show, he was getting better and better at controlling it. Even though, man, I thought a couple of times we was going to lose Shinra, dude. I'm not even going to lie. Like he was getting like- mopped. Yeah, and I, I loved how they show no real break in show. Even though he was like questioning it, he yeah. wasn't breaking. He nope. was just doing what he was doing, right? Yep. And then the moment we get that break in show, <sighs> it hit. It felt it felt right, you know, it not hit, like bro. oh my god, this shouldn't happen. It felt like like Shimmer was chipping and chipping and chipping and chipping away at this un, unbreakable wall. Like show was as bland and break at, at you not getting through. It, I don't care <laughs> yeah. if you're my brother. It's not Straight happening. Up. Straight up. I have to bring you back, and that's just what it is. And then they didn't just give us the fact that, hey, we rescued your brother. They didn't just give us that. Mm-hmm. They, they made it so, like, you literally, yeah, you got your brother back mentally, but no, let's mind control, and your brother is now gone again. And it, yep. and it all, like, it, it makes it more compelling 100%. to kind of, like, want to get more out of these characters because now next time you see a brother – we know that he can be mind controlled. Exactly. Can she mind control you? Right. Like what, what is going to be the, the step here? Like, how do we keep that from happening again when you actually see your brother? And dude, we learned so much about the Adola burst, but we don't know nothing about the Adola burst. Like it's so not a damn thing. Great. We learned so much about it, but we know nothing about it at the same time. And that's what makes fire force story. So great. So you think about it, we don't know, what the hell is inside of Shinra, right? Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, we obviously got a hint of it. It's his mom, essentially. His mom reaching out to him to help him save his brother. Like, I think that's, it's so strong. They don't explain that and they don't have to. You understand it by via their storytelling and their beautiful ass art and mm-hmm. animation, dude. It's so great. All right, let's- <laughs> I, I, I do want to just say one more thing. <laughs> yeah. And this is just a part that- um, what, when we talk about Adola Burst, we only know about four Adola bur- Burst in the show. Mm-hmm. We know Shinra, Sho, the girl who mind controls Sho, and then the one that Vulcan and his family created. Oh, yeah, they did create the... Oh, I forgot about that piece. So we only know about four Adola Burst in the entire show so far, and three of them are on people. How does an Adola Burst outside of a person even work? We don't even know. It's this, literally this. powering the entire, like city or world or whatever yeah and we have we have questions if it's that powerful where you can power cities and and countries and worlds off of it we have a person who has that in their feet and Mm -hmm. in their entire body or in their hands like Mm -hmm. how how do we quantify what this is about to be all right let's let's go brother it's wonderful let's do this um the first category in my checks waifu waifu review skill is pacing oh god yes 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 a lot of people would not agree with this review of Fire Force. I can already tell because they hated the pacing. Polo understands. He does not agree. The pacing in Fire Force gets a nine from me. A nine? A nine for me. I feel like it was paced so fucking well with this different spin on its storytelling that like I mean, even, yeah, one through five and then five through 10, those episodes, you, it kept it going. Damn. Hmm. So you give it a nine. Yeah, I give it a nine. All right. Um, I actually am surprised. I thought she was going to give it a 10. I give it a nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you thought I was going to give it a Yeah, I'd like yeah. to pace him, but it, there, there is some times where it's a little bit slower in the episodes to where, like, it wasn't it didn't hold it back, but it was like conversation pieces that didn't need to be had. 
but still played an integral part into the main story. So I know I, know. I, I said this like one time before, one of my favorite parts about some of the, the moments was how like when Shinra was thinking, they would put him in the background while he was thinking about something. Yes. He, he didn't have a face anymore, but you could see like the shading will let you know like he's kind of brooding or or thinking about something. That was like it one was of those amazing. small little pacing moments that it's like it's only a, a two second clip or one second clip, but it, it made a difference in storytelling. Yes. Um, yes. Speaking of a segue, <laughs> the next uh, segment is story. Oh, um, shit. So you, you did. You said pacing was a nine. I gave Pacing a nine. I'm going to say the story so far for me is a nine. Yeah. We, yeah, that's, wow. Same. Same. God damn it. (laughs) Same. Yeah, this this storytelling is phenomenal. And we gave you all the reasons why it was phenomenal. Um, If you haven't seen all of it, or if you feel like you you used had to step away from Fire Force, go back. And watch it. Sorry, we spoiled a lot of it, but it's it's still worth watching. The way they tell the story is top notch because it's it's not just thrown in your face like a shonen normally is. You don't get monologue from from villains telling you, "I do this because I am evil." You know, you don't you don't. They do some of that, yeah. but they explain but, it in the in the sense of their their reasoning. And yeah, and I, I was gonna say to me, the the villains don't even really seem evil. They don't seem evil. Like, you know. Yeah. To me, they seem like they just have a different understanding of the world and how things work. Yes. They actually want to make the world better, but they're doing it in their own way, and it yep. doesn't work with the norm. They don't agree with our main character's philosophy. They have a philosophy of their own that that uh that just expands this world so much bigger than just I'm a villain for evil's sake like the devil being introduced in Black Clover shit that shit pissed me off oh, yeah I'm the <laughs> I'm the guy that made you trade against the humans because I'm just evil like uh, shut the fuck up it's so stupid you don't, you don't really know why the devil's evil yet other than the fact that he's the devil <laughs> <laughs> he said why he was evil cause he wants to get back at his, his elders yes so stupid Anyway, uh, next segment is animation, bro. How you want to start this one off? What oof, you got for me? Oof, oof. Now, Fire Force's animation between the the symbolic nature of their fire suits um, being when the blue glows, it's 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 the power of friendship. It's the power of family and that company. Or when their eyes light up because of like their emotion and they're bringing up them their uh their powers the fight in the nether oh between the lieutenant and the sniper that alone that was up there with episode 19 the demon slayer for me animation gets a 9.5 from your boy 9.5 it was the way the way every like there's scenes in every episode of fire force that you can take you can screenshot and you can hang on your wall. For a long time, I was taking screenshots of Fire Force and just posting them on Twitter, talking about how beautiful the show is because it is gorgeous. Like, like you said, whenever his, whenever his face has has this tick, like whenever you tense up, and it would show like the shadow of his eyes and his face tensing up. Uh, it, uh, it was wonderful. Damn, Fire Force is going to have such a high review. <clears throat> so. I actually have a little bit of a a gripe with that. Sure. Because uh, you did say how they talked about the the blue, right? And I love how that was actually, the animation played a huge part in the story. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did the same thing. Every time I saw like a dope scene from Fire Force, I was putting that boy on my screensaver. Yeah. Fire Force is a 10 for animation for me. Oh, okay. And I honestly don't see how you can give it anything else. 9.5, I don't. man. I, I I have no idea because like the animation was consistent. When when things got big, it got big. There was never a drop in quality. Never a drop in quality. I just the I'm I am confused. Um yeah, all right. All yeah, right. I, don't, I don't I don't I can't explain it. I just, I, just, right, I don't feel a 10, but I don't I, I don't I don't feel anything less than a 9.5. All right, I'll take that. I don't have a reason. 
I, I loved it. It's I, great. I loved it. It's so to me, I, I love the art style, everything about it. Yeah, I thought the animation was, was, was perfect. Like the way the artist represented that style, because it's the same style in Soul Eater, mm-hmm. but all it is is actually more clean. Um, when yes. things are supposed to look grungy, they look grungy. Yes. Like, he was fighting the the witch doctor face dude in the in the in the uh, woods. We saw same thing Polo said about Demon Slayer: the blades of grass and the leaves. And Individual when the leaves, when yeah. the rope wrapped around the tree, we also heard the sound for it. So what's about sound design? And do I do sound next? Nah, uh, I'm doing sound. Yeah, sound design for me is a ten, and the only way it would get an eleven is. <laughs> it can get an eleven too. <laughs> I, I honestly, I honestly think that uh, this show could have had no music whatsoever, oh. and it would got a, it would got a ten yes. on sound design. Yes, um, the only it was only one part of the entire show I didn't like, and that was the second second part of the of the season's intro. Like when it got to that intro, mm-hmm. the second part. But everything else is like perfect, and that intro to me, I skipped that shit anyway. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. But that's I, that's the only reason why it gets a ten for me too. Because yes, I did listen to the second intro once because Tell made me. It was atrocious. It's bad. Um, but that first intro was what? That, that first, first intro, intro was probably one of the greatest uh, of that so summer. Good. It, was it was super so good. good. It was super super good. Not only that. Okay. Okay. Listen. Okay. We all know the fighting and the, the directional sound that they use in the fighting is wonderful. It's it's 3D sound in that and a 2D anime. Like come the fuck on. Fire Force, you're amazing. But not to mention whenever they they don't do a lot of music inside of the actual show. They do it in the most important moments. And like something about that quiet, calm stressfulness that they would do, like with their sound design, like the timing and when they will bring in music or take out music or just I, I don't know man it's something it's special this I don't think this is this is the tier this is the 10 of sound design like the 10 so everything else sound design has to compare to this 10 and there's no way we can give it less only more it'd get 11 if it didn't have that second intro <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what I'm talking about. That's the only thing that was made in eleven, bro. Straight up, okay, eleven. Straight up. I'm glad you agree with me because I was feeling that. All right. So, speaking of elevens, um, characters. How oh you characters? yeah, shit, dude. I, okay. Who did not like? I don't know, Polo. You tell me. Who didn't you like? I'm trying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Mm-hmm. <sighs> mm. Not a soul. <laughs> not, not a one. I didn't like. I didn't like like nobody. I didn't the not like. The, the characters we dislike, we dislike them for a reason. Like, and we even talk about. Let's say we talk about the dude who was turning people into like, uh, infernals, like the little kids and stuff. Yeah. Like he was evil, he had his purpose, and he was then fucked up. But we we loved seeing him get beat up. We liked we liked his his evilness and how he was going about it. He mm-hmm. was passionate about everything, even when he mm-hmm. we didn't know he was evil. I don't know, bro. Shit. It, um, the, the character's story. Uh, uh, I mean, Lisa. Even bro. I love Lisa, dude. <laughs> Between Lisa and Habana, all right. I even like Arthur, like the the the, the main character's rival. You, you're always supposed to hate the main character's rival, but I love that fucking guy, dude. I love him to death. I, fuck. <laughs> it's, a, it's a 10, man. I got to go Damn. 10. That's what I'm talking about. I can't. One and, of I'm, my, one, and I'm the harsh one. Yeah. One of my favorite characters in the entire, uh, in this entire show so far was a Joker just because he was there, yes, but he wasn't and there. We thought we thought he was a bad guy, and he split up. He split up the factions. Now there's three groups of people mm-hmm. doing doing what the fuck we trying to figure out. We trying to figure out what's going on here. Yep. And I gave the characters a nine. Who who got the nine? Like who who dropped you down to a nine? Help me understand. 
it's, it's not that I just don't dis I don't dislike anybody in this show. Everyone to me feels purpose, like there's purpose. I'm I'm dropping it down to a nine too. Bring me down to a nine. And the reason why is because I just thought of my ten in characters. My ten in characters is Astro Lost in Space, and they are not Astro Lost in Space. So they're gonna get a nine. I I loved everybody, but they're not Astro Lost in Space. So I'm with yeah. that. I'm with that. Sorry. Yeah. It's not like I said, it's not that I dislike any of the characters. It's right. more or less that like the characters are great, yes, but they're not like 100% like this is going to be my, every character is going to be someone straight up on my grand list. Right. Dude. And I'm so, I'm so thankful. Like I am, I think the gods that Funimation gave me great dub voice acting in this show, bro. Cause Demon Slayer compared to Funimation's dub, like Demon Slayer just looks like a fucking terrible show because of the dub now. Like I was watching some of them dubbed episodes and it is awful, awful, awful. Thank you, Funimation, for giving me great voice acting with Fire Force because uh, I love it. Okay. So, averaging out the scores. (sighs) It's going to be so high. So, Polo's rating, you know, Polo is the harsh one of us. Polo gave Fire Force a 9.3 out of 10. Okay. Yes. 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 Me, being the more uh, easygoing of the two, gave Fire Force a 9.4 out of 10. Giving Fire Force a 9.35 on our scale, making it our new second highest anime rated so far. It's higher than Vinland Saga. It's higher than than Promise Neverland. It's higher than Promise Neverland. Are we tripping? Are we though? Are we? Do you feel like cook come on? Do you feel like we tripping? Nah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think we tripping. I think that's I think that's solid. I think that's solid too. Oh my goodness! So now our new uh, official list now goes: Astral Lost in Space at number one, Fire Force at number two. Promise Neverland at number three, Vinland Saga at number four, and then Demon Slayer at number five. That's right. We have some other ones that we rated, like Erased is number six, and Dr. Stone is number seven. Erased is number six? That deserves more. Nah, I think I think we're being objective. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I just think it's better than Demon Slayer, to be honest. We gonna say, how about this though? Because we talked about this before. You can like a series, and it be better for you personally. But I think that we, I think we rated everything objectively I and fair. Do, I do agree with that. Okay, okay. Because no, right. I do, I do personally think that I would watch Erased again, 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 and again. Same. But I don't think that the quality in Erased is as good as the quality in. Uh, Fire Force, but I also think Erase's story is better. Personal opinion. Yeah, 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 same. Same. All right. Yeah. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. I feel like I did something wrong at first, <laughs> but no, I don't. I don't. You feel conflicted. You're like, I, I should have gave it a higher score. I felt dirty at first. I felt dirty. Uh-huh. But I'm good, man. I'm good with that. You feel dirty because anime Twitter is telling you to hate it and you, you like, fuck that. I guess maybe that's it. Maybe you're right. Because I like I run the uh, the Twitter account for my check waifu waifu and uh, man, some of the shit we get. Luckily, ain't nobody come at us about our reviews so far though. Like nobody, they they're like I respect it. Shout out! Oh, I have to give a shout out to our boy. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and find him now because he deserved a shout out, and I and and I want to make sure I, I give it to him. A guy who's been listening to our episodes and and writing into us on Twitter. Uh, telling us, uh, you know, his thoughts about, you know, certain stuff that we said. And uh, he watched Astro Lost in Space Force. And uh, I'm going I'm to I'm properly shout him out here. So give me just two seconds. I apologize. <laughs> but he deserve it. Um, he's an awesome dude. Uh, here it is. Okay. His name is. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's a pretty funny name. Hold on. Uh, damn it. We got. So many tweets, it's actually insane. I 
Okay, okay. Dude, our Twitter pops off. <laughs> there That's because you keep it popping. <laughs> His uh, at name is uh, Kush by the Bush. Kush by that Bush, I'm sorry. Hey. Um, so he said he's uh he said so I finished Astra. The boost is definitely real. This anime was great, but predictable. I love the uh artistry, storytelling, characters, and overall plot. That predictability takes away from it being a 10, though. And he said, I'll start the fate stay next. So he's obviously a listener, dude, and we thank you so much for that. Mm-hmm. Uh Kush by that bush. <laughs> Give him a follow on Twitter. He got some great uh insight about some anime too. He's a good dude. Thank you so much for uh, rocking with us, man. It means a lot to us. It truly do. It really, really do. Especially when you take our recommendation. I don't agree with you about that predictability because I, this shit in Astro Lost in Space, I did not see coming except for maybe <laughs> one thing. Uh, and that's uh, Shars. Some didn't feel right with Shars from the from the jump. <laughs> but that was the only thing I could, <laughs> I could think about. Shars is wrong in your soul. Yeah, something wasn't right about him. But great show man thanks for watching thanks for listening to us man and now let's get into this uh my hero academia bro all right straight up my hero academia what did i tell you how you feel about this episode just give me just get just tell me just tell me right now just tell me the episode was uh probably the best episode in this show um ever yeah yeah it's it's you know what i think though what sucks about it is that it's a part of season four. Season four <laughs> as a whole just isn't that good, but it has the best episode in the show. It's the show's yeah. history. So far, it has the best villain in the show. Yes. In my opinion. Yes. At least we, like, I feel like his ambitions are understandable. Mm-hmm. And Which this, they go more episode, into detail about. This episode to me was, was it. Like, I feel like this is how you design an episode. Right. Yes. Like, this is how you put together an episode. Yes, like, tell. Yes. I said this on I said this on Twitter. To me, if this had came out in 2019, this would have been the best sound designed episode, the best animated episode. I don't agree with that. And the best choreographed episode of 2019. I don't agree with any of that. Okay. Uh, you don't have to. <laughs> the sound but, wasn't the sound wasn't great. Um, I'm talking about like so. I'm talking about the overall sounds for the fight, obviously. And yeah. then the the impactful moments with the the audio, like how it crescendoed into like the moments. Like it wasn't like no, nothing to me felt misplaced. I disagree because I a lot of the times they drop the sound completely intentionally for for story reasons. And, mm-hmm. you know, being up in the air high or whatever, whatever the, the science behind that is, it it didn't it didn't feel right. But I will say the voice acting in that sub, that emotion that they had is top notch from, from Deku and, and, and Eerie and even uh, overhaul. Like it was, that was the strongest part about the episodes. The sound, it, it sounded like a bunch of wet beat hitting the floor, but <laughs> I mean, I, I'll take that. I, I, but I, it, it's it's my personal that. opinion, but, and the animation was, was absolutely gorgeous though. Best. Yeah. No fate. Fate has a beat. Demon Slayer has a beat. Uh, it it kind of remind me more so of 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 how I wish my Psycho looked. You know what I'm saying? Like it's neater, but it still has those harsh lines, and yeah. you know what I'm saying, and those crazy it, movements. But it's done you, by the same studio. <laughs> but <laughs> it still had those. It has those harsh lines, but it's it it has movement that you can actually follow with your eyes. And so it was that's what that was beautiful. Let's talk about some of those movements, though. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Like, so one of like probably everyone's favorite moment yeah. is when our boy Deku is like over overhaul. Yeah. And he's his eyes come down, you know, his eyes are pure white and mm-hmm. you see the shadow over his face. And he's about to throw that um serious punch. Yeah. Yeah. From one punch, man. Yeah. <laughs> Bruh. I, that moment that just some of those faces that they that they did yeah. made me feel made me feel things i was just like yes. yo deku's not having it right now mm-hmm. like this is a rap for you bro you're done this I is a rap for you i absolutely loved it uh what i don't understand though help me understand this overhaul is what overhaul is okay we know overhaul's power mhm 
What stopped Overhaul from just grabbing Deku and dismantling him? He couldn't reach Deku. Is that is that what it is? Because Deku was just so yeah. far away. Like if you if we watch the fight, he never actually hit Deku with his hands. Deku was getting close enough to hit him, but every time he hit him, mm-hmm. Overhaul was even fly or either flying two hundred feet in the air or flying fifty feet back. There, was, there was never there was never a moment where Deku touched Overhaul and Overhaul had a had a chance to do anything. Good point. That's why next next week when the dub drop, we're going to watch that joint and we're going to talk over it. We're going to commentate over it and we're going to drop it on, on our Patreon. So support that if you want to see that, because I can't wait to discuss that even yeah. further. Um, and maybe maybe I'm wrong about my thoughts on the animations and the sounds. The animation was great. I mean, it was good. The sound, though, I don't I don't see that. Uh, maybe in dub you'll feel it better. I just know I was I, I was tuned in, bro. Like I was up at six o'clock in the morning. Long. And my whole body was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, I was, I don't know, bro. I felt it. Like, the the music dropped when, like, he was reaching for Aerie. Oh, no. That. Yeah, you're right. And, Hold Time and, out. Time out. Let's rewind a little bit. That music with the actual lyrics this time? When it, it, it came in in English. Yeah. And, like, you felt it, like, because she started singing first. And you didn't yeah. hear the actual music. And then the, the, the actual, like, orchestra came in. And then it switched to Japanese. And then yeah. it was like this, this, this like bolsterous sound that's like, like hope is here. I was like, holy. That part was the best. Yeah, maybe it was the that was the only part I did like though. Yeah, yeah I wise. mean, I get it. I, I completely get it. Like I liked when they cut the sound because I to me that's that. part of, that's part of the yeah. sound design. To me, yeah. it's like I like when they cut the sound for certain parts because you don't want to take emphasis like the animation and the sound have to work together right and if you if you sometimes like i, I said it said this about the fate series when they do fights like they do the same thing in some parts where they'll cut the sound but like when we talk about saber alter hitting berserker with that sword as soon as it was like okay berserker's not going down in one hit <laughs> that, yeah that sound that audio that that happened with that subwoofer for his hitting <laughs> and then the actual orchestra jump in and you hear the the Ooh, ooh, on the the yeah. vocals and stuff. Let's and let's get I that song like, for the trailer. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. I, I just I just feel like realistically, quiet is just as important as actual. Yeah, sound. I think it has to be the right quiet. Um, You're right, because to me it had a different effect than it had on you. Yeah, but I I completely get it because I like the closure of certain things like closure visually and i like closure um audio uh, yeah. uh, in terms of um, my audit audio I see so basically saying. if if you if you make me have to imagine what's happening in terms mm-hmm. of sound or make me have to imagine what happens in, in terms of visual even though there's a slight picture there or there's an idea of what's happening there mm-hmm. i enjoy that personally to me that that can be as creative as you know actually putting something there no and i'm with that because we just we just discussed that with fire force but again it's a a lot of problem with this season of of my hero is the timing of stuff just feels off. This yeah, episode's timing was perfect, but the music timing was off. If they had paced, and I mean, obviously, you can't pace every episode like this because that's just unreasonable. The season um, the, because the season will be over right now if they paced it like this. <laughs> yeah. Even though what we got eleven more episodes. Eleven more episodes, yeah. Even if they had paced it or. Yeah, even if they had pasted just like this, it would have been, yeah, it would have been ridiculous. Like, there's no way. Actually, you know, we got 12 more episodes. Mm. But we, we would literally, um, we would be at a, I, don't, I can't really explain it. <laughs> but we, we would be seeing some stuff in the anime. Like, we're going to see some stuff that's going to change a lot of people's mind about Deku coming at the end of the season. People already changed their mind. They flipped like pancakes, bro. It was insane. <laughs> Well, was, you know, I said that everybody was like, the million deserves all for one or one for all. The million deserves it more than Deku. And now they like, uh uh-uh, uh, Deku's best boy. Deku was trending number one on Twitter when that yeah. episode released. Obviously. Number one on Twitter. Yeah. I was like, how did that, first of all, anime don't trend like that all the time. Right. But for Deku to hit number one on trending on Twitter, that that was fire. I, I was, that made me hype, made me feel happy to be a podcast co host. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Same. Because the only time that happened was episode 19 of Damon Slayer. Mm-hmm. And then this. Um, and then Bleach trended a, a couple of times. It wasn't number one, but it, it trended because yeah, people e- thought even it was Even like Dragon Ball Super, 
didn't trend like that. Right. Right. So, yeah. Um, well, I was going to say something. Um, shit. I lost my train of thought. My bad. No, it's not. It's no, it's not on you. It's on me. Um, shit. Yeah. Yeah. No. But people were saying on Twitter um, when they were saying before they were saying Lemillion deserved all for one. And then now Deku does. People like also responding like, hey, but Deku had a whole hospital on his back. Like he literally was carried by Aerie. So like you can't really say he does. He still deserved it because he can't do that on his own. It's impossible for him to do his own for now, obviously. Mm-hmm. So yeah. now now the the reality is that Lemillion didn't have the power Deku had. And Lemillion, there's no way Lemillion could have beat Overhaul at where he was right there. Overhaul is it though? had, had if, eight arms. And he no. didn't have the power to he did not have the power to punch Overhaul as hard as he needed to. Oh, that's true. That's true. But Lemillion would have won the fight if Overhaul didn't play like a bitch. Like if he didn't tell him to take away his his powers, basically, and he wasn't guarding Airy at the same time. Lemillion would have won tenfold, bro. Tenfold. Here's where I think we're discrediting discrediting Overhaul. You saw Deku broke Overhaul's arm with a punch. Okay. Right? The same punch that was probably stronger than the punch that Lemillion delivered to all of Deku and everyone and knocked everyone in the entire class out. Mm-hmm. All he did was disassemble his arm and fix his arm like brand new. Now... We're talking about the same dude who, yes, he couldn't actually touch Lemillion because exactly. Lemillion had skills outside of that. That's what but I was as, soon, for. as soon as he was able to take the other guy and put him into his body, Deku could no longer punch him hard enough to actually do any real damage. Deku had to be able to go 100% to actually do anything to him. Right. But, I mean, do we... Lemillion's power, bro. His power. What's stopping... To be, to like, be intangible? Yeah. Like what's stopping what's stopping him from reaching in and grabbing what he needs from overhaul and removing it and then well, it's over. You, you're right. You what's know? stopping overhaul from cracking the ground entirely underneath him while he just used pillars to keep himself float afloat. That's a good point too. It's it's hard to that, say. That's that's what I'm saying. I'm just saying like I think we're discrediting because discrediting how well thought out and how strong overhaul actually was. Mm -hmm. I think Lemillion could have beat him if overhaul had no one else there. Straight up. Yeah. I I entirely agree with that. If it was overhaul versus Lemillion, the fear shooting the fair ones, ain't nothing overhaul can do like overhaul could have still cracked the ground and stuff like that. But that's only going to help you how far, bro. Cause you can't touch him. You literally can't touch him. Yeah. Um, But if you have, if you have, like I said, like he stacked his power with one guy and yeah. then stacked his power with a whole nother, even more muscular guy. Like he took the quirk of his, his ally who literally saps the power of those around him. Yeah. yeah. Uh, think about this, man. If he didn't, if Deku didn't have Aerie though, he would have been fucking done for. Bro. He would have been done for. It's nothing that he could have did. He would have, he would have had to hit him with over 100% hit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but think about this. Lemillion. And imagine if he had one for all. If if Lemillion had one for all, it would have been a wrap. It would have been a I, wrap. I, I think it would have been a wrap. It, it's nothing. I mean, because Deku basically could fly at 100%. Because mm-hmm. he was able to kick the air and just fly around. That that shows how powerful Deku is. Um, but like I said, we also have to remember, Lemillion is three years in at, at the most illustrious Deku's high rookie. school for heroes. This is Deku's not even six months into school. Oh, is that is that what it is? Six, they is, they not they not even six months into the school year, bro. What the fuck? At the end of this season, they will be six months in. That is nutty. That's nutty. So that's, that's what I'm saying. Like that manga knowledge, bro. Well, even in the manga, they not even they not even finished with the year. What? At in the manga, we still got three months left before some big shit happen. Before the eight year is out. Oh my god, I can't wait. Oh, this is wonderful. This so that's beautiful. that's what I'm saying is like you got you comparing a, a tadpole to a to a bullfrog. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I agree right now. The million definitely would have utilized um, one for all significantly better. Yeah. Uh, but we looking at Deku tadpole ha- hasn't had a quirk for longer than, than yeah. three months, yeah. four months. Yeah. You know, 
what are we really looking at here? We're looking at some amazing stuff. This is amazing. That's a good point. All right. So let, let me let me speed up the conversation a little bit further because this episode is just running long. Sorry. <laughs> um, this is a discussion I wanted to have, though, like anime society, though, with seeing something in the moment overhypes the hell out of everything. OK, they did it with Demon Slayer. They, they're, and now they're doing it with uh, with um, this. my hero. Yeah, my hero. This one episode has people claiming that this is the best moment in anime history. No, like, not at all. Like, seeing fucking Gohan kill Cell wasn't the best shit ever in, in the fucking world. Like, I, I don't under like I don't understand why people can go from one extreme to the next so easily in anime culture. It kind of bugs me a little bit because it kind of it kind of deflates the power that that episode has for me because of that. Like, you, you can't say that this is the best thing that ever happened in anime history. You instantly start comparing it to other things. Exactly. And like, yeah, it's, 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 it's OK. You know what I'm saying? I even fucking I think and I'm, just, I'm probably going to take some hate for this, but I think the Naruto Sasuke and the. Uh, uh, she wasn't even in the fight really at all, but the the Naruto Sasuke and Zabuza fight was was more impactful when I thought about it. Like after, was more impactful for the moment I should say because I mean it's a, it's a little bit different in a sense because that was the first time we seen some shit like that when it happened with Naruto, and then this has been done in a sense before in yeah. different aspects. But like it's I don't know it. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I, I don't like that. I, I think that's a better discussion for another episode because I, if I had to say my my impactful moment, it would be um, when Gone from Hunter Hunter. Even that that that, yes. that kite couldn't be fixed. Yes. Even I'm like, that, dude. Just the the face alone to me yes. that 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 one minute was more impactful to me than so many other entire anime series. You you you, you nailed it, bro. You nailed it. You fucking nailed it with that one. That that one was great. But I do love, I love, this is, this is not, let's be real. This isn't the best. This isn't even the best moment in this series. Um, no, it's, are, it's. <laughs> well, I'm talking about right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> right now it's the best moment in the series, but this isn't even the best moment in this series. Like there are other nah. huge moments yeah, you're that right. are going to be even better. And I think we're going to have another moment that's even, that's in the end of this season, that's going to be a huge cliffhanger and also shake up the entire anime but but well like, not the entire anime world but shake up the entire my hero world if you watch only my hero but like how can we we still cannot forget all might and all for one no like it's it's that moment still was is there like it happened that shit was I powerful too they did they did more effort and put in way more work for this episode yeah, than they true. did with the the all for one versus one for all um because really what they did with with that fight is they made it dark. Yeah. And this episode, it that dark undertone, and let's be real, they, they probably did that intentionally. They were showing that this is the last fight for yeah. All Might. Yeah. And this is the beginning of the fight for Deku. This is Deku's first time the taking out the villain. Yeah. His first time taking out the villain without the help of like mm. a, ba- a major hero. Oh. <laughs> I'm about to say without help. Oh boy. No, I'm not saying because Eric, <laughs> that Eric, had a crutch. Carried, that, Eric <laughs> carried that fight. Yeah. But like we, we're saying though, like that's what All Might would have been able to do at yeah, 100%, true. right? That boy so Deku basically, had a he, that's his, on his back. That's, his, that's the future for Deku. That's yeah. what Deku's going to look like at 100%. Right. So we have an idea what his future is going to look like when he graduates UA. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to next week, uh, the wrap up. I want to see how they wrap this up. Hopefully they do it in a, in a nice timely, timely matter because they fucking suck at doing that. Um, <laughs> like their, their time uh, is it's so bad. But this definitely uh, was the best moment in my hero history, though, for sure. Yeah, so far. Yeah. So far. So far. So with that, that'll wrap episode 31 in a long one. Episode 31 of my check waifu waifu. I've been at Polo Born Fly on all social media. I am King Taliano on all social media. We love you. Check out our socials. Check out our Teespring. Check out our Patreon. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. Peace. My check one, two, one, two. My sweet waifu. Is that you?